then coming to the treatment of multiple sclerosis so uh, what are the disease modifying therapies so disease modifying therapies they constitute the mainstay of treatment for relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis as we have already discussed relapsing remitting is the most common type of multiple sclerosis and what are the drugs uh, mainstay of treatment for relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis so these are disease modifying therapy so what are these glatiramer acetate so what are these disease modifying therapies glatiramer acetate dimethyl uh, fumarate fingolimod interferon beta preparations natalizumab metoxandron so what are the drugs glatiramer acetate glatiramer acetate dimethyl fumarate glatiramer acetate dimethyl fumarate fingolimod fingolimod interferon beta preparations interferon beta preparations natalizumab it is a monoclonal antibody so what is the monoclonal antibody in multiple sclerosis natalizumab and metoxandron so all are a primary disease modifying therapies in multiple sclerosis so the early treatment uh, should uh, commences upon establishing a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis so as soon as we diagnose multiple sclerosis we have to uh, start the treatment so what is the short term goal a uh, short term goal is we have to uh, reduce the lesion activity on mri so what is the short term goal in the treatment we have to reduce the lesion activity in mri so what are the long term goals long term goals is you have we have to prevent the secondary progressive multiple sclerosis so long term goal is uh prevent the secondary progressive multiple sclerosis and after initiating the treatment we have to check that there is adequate patient compliance and then we also have to monitor for the drug toxicity so now we have this glatiramer acetate so glatiramer acetate so what are the disease modifying therapies glatiramer acetate dimethyl uh, fumarate fingolimod interferon beta preparations natalizumab and metoxandron so coming to glatiramer acetate so what is this glatiramer acetate it is a mixture of synthetic uh, polypeptides it is a mixture of synthetic polypeptides so this uh, functions as a ligand for mhc molecules so this functions as a ligand for which molecules mhc molecules so binding of this uh, glatiramer acetate it limits the activation and it induces the regulatory cells and this also has got a neuroprotective and repair mechanisms this is a neuroprotective and this also has got repair mechanisms so how is it administered it is administered uh, for in a subcutaneous way it is well tolerated and but it is not useful for treatment of progressive forms of multiple sclerosis so but it is not useful for treatment of progressive forms for progressive forms we can't give this glatiramer acetate then we have interferon beta preparations interferon beta preparations so how does they act interferon beta modulates t and b cell function uh, and possibly alters cytokine expression so how does these act they modulate t and b cell function they alter cytokine expression and they play a role in blood blood brain barrier recovery they also play a role in blood brain barrier recovery 
and they also decrease matrix metalloproteinase expression so these uh, interferons they also decrease matrix metalloproteinase expression okay so they modulate t cell b cell function so altering the cytokine expression so they help in blood brain barrier recovery and they decrease the matrix metalloproteinase expression so how is the administration we can give either subcutaneous or intramuscular depending upon the preparations but the main uh, side effect of these interferon beta preparations are uh, flu like symptoms and uh, there could be a possible uh, a, a brief worsening of the patient's uh, existing neurological symptoms could be present then we have natalizumab it is intravenously administered it is a humanized monoclonal antibody so what is natalizumab it is an intravenously administered humanized monoclonal antibody so what does it do it blocks leukocyte adhesion with vascular endothelial cells so we have vascular endothelial cells and we have the leukocytes so it blocks the leukocyte adhesion with the vascular endothelial cell and this drug also inhibits the leukocyte migration into the central nervous system so it is blocking the leukocyte adhesion to the endothelial cell and this is also inhibiting the leukocyte migration into the central nervous system so this is usually well tolerated but mild headache and flushing often occur during intravenous administration so what are the side effects mild headache and flushing occur with intravenous administration and then we have this mitoxantrone okay mitoxantrone it is an uh, intravenously administered uh, chemotherapeutic agent mitoxantrone it is an uh, intravenously administered chemotherapeutic agent so this interferes with dna repair and rna synthesis mitoxantrone it is how is it administered it is administered intravenously okay intravenously administered chemotherapeutic agent so this interferes with dna repair and rna synthesis and uh, a possible effect on mainly on dna and rna and a possible effect on cellular and humoral immunity also represents a mechanism so what are the side effects of this metoxantrone so the different adverse effects of this metoxantrone include amenorrhea and alopecia the adverse effects of this metoxantrone includes amenorrhea and alopecia and then we have this fingolimod fingolimod is an uh, it's a orally administered drug this also has got immunomodulatory effects uh, by inhibition of t cell migration fingolimod is a orally administered drug so what are the uh, uh, effects it has got immunomodulatory effects and uh, they inhibit the t cell migration so what are the possible side effects of this fingolimod lymphopenia bradycardia and hepatotoxicity the side effects of this fingolimod include uh, lymphopenia bradycardia and hepatotoxicity uh, patients with this uh, secondary progressive primary progressive progressive relapsing so all they represent neurodegenerative uh, process uh so in these the disease uh, modifying therapies are therefore less effective and uh, treatment with this uh, therapies uh, has uh, ranged from possible benefit to little effect on disease progression and young patients uh, with a short duration of progression seem to derive the most benefit for this uh disease modifying therapies so in patients they should be having a short duration of progress 
uh, who are having a short duration of progr progression they uh, benefit from this uh, disease modifying therapies so the following principles highlight the treatment of acute relapses so we have to treat a uh, underlying condition which could have triggered a relapse in patients with progressive forms of multiple sclerosis disease modifying therapies are less effective okay uh, and apart uh, from this we also have to treat the infections or metabolic derangement which have caused this relapse and um, a symptomatic treatment of the neurological symptoms and we can also give a short course of corticosteroids uh, in assisting the recovery uh, and uh, we can also give rehabilitation with physical and occupational therapy a uh, prognosis uh, as the time progresses the disease will worsen so what are the factors uh, that tell a worse prognosis male gender um, progressive course uh, primarily pyramidal or uh, cerebellar symptoms if patient is having pyramidal or if patient is having cerebellar symptoms male gender progressive course so these patients uh, they have this uh, worse prognosis and if there are frequent relapses and uh, the recovery uh, uh, if the if there is a minimal recovery between the relapses also the prognosis is bad and uh, multifocal onset uh, and early relapse rate that is very early patient is getting relapse rate uh, large uh, uh, lesion load and brain atrophy on mri so all uh, if there is a large lesion load and brain atrophy on mri so all these suggest a worse prognosis so the worse uh, prognostic factors include male gender progressive course uh, primarily pyramidal or cerebellar symptoms uh, more frequent relapses minimal recovery between the relapses multifocal onset high early relapse rate large lesion load and brain atrophy on mri and what are the factors that suggest a favorable diagnosis so factors suggesting a uh, favorable diagnosis include uh, female gender relapsing course mild relapses uh, between the exacerbations if there is a good recovery primarily sensory symptoms if sensory symptoms are there primarily then uh, it has got good prognosis and if there is a long interval and low lesion load and if there is a presentation of optic neuritis then this has got a favorable uh, prognosis so if multiple sclerosis patients if there is optic neuritis so it shows a favorable prognosis and full recovery from exacerbations uh, they show a favorable prognosis complications uh, impaired uh, mobility can occur and um, so this impaired mobility is multifactorial either defective motor control and vestibular symptoms uh, brain stem lesions sometimes uh, which uh, involve the ocular motor pathways they can cause us chronic diplopia so if chronic diplopia is there we have to give prisms and surgery and then we have chronic vertigo so chronic vertigo respond to meclizin ondan cetron or we can also give diazepam so chronic dysphagia uh, from bulbar dysfunction so that leads to chronic aspiration and cerebellar tremor it is a, a significant course of disability again cerebellar tremor it is also a significant source of disability Uh, and then uh, urinary tract infections can occur from bladder uh, dysfunction constipation also occurs so we have to give uh, increased uh, fiber intake and bulk forming agents and erectile dysfunction it is treated with uh, oral uh, phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor so how to treat this erectile dysfunction 
oral phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors cognitive impairment uh, mood disorders and generalized fatigue there are also long term sources of morbidity and they are managed in various ways